In the bottom right in the red. He's the ter he's the terror the red. In the blue, he's the Terran player. It's Bjorn. Never left in the red. Formerly of Freak of Freaks, now teamless, but looking better than he has in a long time. It's stats. And stats has been one of these players that, like, yeah, he comes back from the military and he's okay, I guess. Kind of a this middling return. And then we look at him in Katowice, and he looks okay in one late game. In one late game PVT against Clem, he bombs out of the group, wins like one series. I forget exactly who he goes and who he loses to, uh, who who he beats. Uh, he beats whoever was below him in the group. But anyways, goes like one in five in the Katowice group, which is not incredible. You know, it's... But he does look good against Clem. And he, he does look good in some of his series, even if he does get one, get zero two to one two, something like that. You're like, ah, oh, okay, maybe he's starting to come back here a little bit. Look, he did qualify. He had the easiest possible qualifying run. And by a large margin, just easy. It's incredibly easy run. And then you're like, okay, maybe, maybe Stats is going to do something. Maybe Stats is coming back. That, that'd be cool. Uh, I mean, he's back from the military, but maybe he's starting to reclaim some of that form. And then he tops his group. <laughs> then he tops his group in the GSL Group A over Dark. Over Crater, I think it was, was the other Protoss player in the group. Uh, and he actually just has this really nice run. And you're like, okay. Maybe Stats is back. Maybe Stats has things figured out because uh, he showed some really good PVZ. Showed some fantastic PVT. The one thing that... I don't have as much up-to-date information on it. Well, this is PVT. How good? Or uh, is this? Yeah, PVT. How good is that one? We saw the Clem series. And we saw him 2-0 Plasma earlier. But Plasma doesn't really count. <laughs> not, not, oh, there we go. Nice shot. Knocks down the Reaper. As Bjorn cries a little bit. So there we go. Uh, when we talk about this, by the way, talking about stats being back and looking better, we do have stats about stats. And we find out that actually Illegal Life thinks it's about 70-30. Historically, they are 50-50, 22 and 21 all time. Uh, I'm actually, that's actually probably pretty good news for stats that beyond, uh, that Illegal Act thinks it's 70-30 because I think a month, a month ago, it would have been 80-20, yeah. So that tells us more than anything else that we are seeing some, I think, hopefully, uh, we are seeing some growth in stats' as development. As, by the way, look at how insanely greedy this is, Beyond. Natural's done. Sure, fine. Second, third back, barracks on the way. And Bjorn does go for this three racks play. Not uncommonly. That being said, he's putting it on location, which is wild here. And I... I mean, part of this plays into just how defensive stats generally plays. But the fact that Bjorn is gone and has gone for this... Well, first of all, stats is going to scout that there's three racks. But the fact that Bjorn has gone... That stats is... Or that Bjorn has gone for this th third barracks or this third command center on location is wild and stats is not good. he's got this phoenix just send it over to the third base stats see what's happening but he has no idea he's got nothing the third base on the way becomes third command center is faster than than stats is third nexus and beyond has this powerful timing of stim of combat shields in the next right around five minutes or so with these marines as they move out now stats is aware of the aggression he knows yeah there's uh three racks and no there's no third base that he's aware of but generally, there's going to be a third base behind this, that, or there's going to be some tech follow-up on the three racks. And seeing as there was no real tech follow-up that that saw, he should be pretty well prepared to defend against this one. Ah, it was classic, not Korean. There we go. Uh, classic, not creator. But anyway, beyond, he moves out a little bit. Not really going to find much of what he wants. But again, Stim's not done. Combat Shields is not done, and Stats is going to have its Blink done soon, adding in more Immortals. Do we have a Robo Bay? I, I don't see one. And I mean, this is just classic Stats. I've talked to a lot of Protoss players who are going to say, look, you know what? Two-Gate Blink, Two-Gate Blink Expand is not really good. It's not really viable. It doesn't put enough pressure on the Terran. It doesn't give you enough defensive power. Well, Stats is going to say, yeah, I know it is. It is actually that good. It is absolutely what we're looking for. And if he gets away with it, it's great. It means that you're able to go in and properly 
do what you need all right get get your third base up get your economy up pretty much as quick as possible start to develop that one get just enough defense and we are five minutes into this game and not a well i guess the reaper died but not a single unit has died on either side beyond postured a little bit he hoped for something but he knows that he's been scouted so again you go into that next level of tech and now the gateway explosion happens now stats is going to put himself in a little bit better of a production capability he's going to give himself a little bit better options but by the way look at his vision on the map right now he's got everything stalker is going to knock this marine down but yeah man that's talking about the shield of fire talking about this player who knows just about everything and he is just in such a good well okay i'm not going to say he's in a good position in the game because really the game has not developed right beyond has his third base he's getting double gas on that right now both players are playing the double blind setup of oh what if, what, what are you gonna do well i don't know what do you want to do i don't know what do you want to do has very much been what's happening right now uh that being said stats would like to get a fourth base up rather soon but i think we're gonna see a couple of colossus pop up before that really happens is beyond now he's got stim plus one combat shields all of these are fantastic upgrades and he's just going to start to knock down some attack paths knock these rocks down move a little forward stims and marines sees what he can see and well finally we're getting some aggression coming out of beyond but this is going to be into single colossus double immortal and as long as stats is positioning well as a yeah this marine's going to scout the probe but again that probe was not really supposed to do much it was just dropping a pylon down for vision well, i don't know how much more beyond's going to be able to really get done with this second colossus done third on the way charge about halfway done but now we are starting to see this terran aggression really starts to move forward guardian shield's gonna get procked but the sentries are just falling here immortals are dying i say i don't think beyond's gonna get a ton done here but well that overestimates himself figures out ah i got enough here i got two colossus i've got immortals i've got stalkers i've got a sentry well beyond has just a ton of marauders right now and with shield battery overcharge is gonna try to do something beyond hot drops on top of the colossus widow mines to try to kill this thing off Shots are going to go off on the probe line, I guess. But yes, Tex is just totally dead. All right, then. And look at this. Prox Steward Axe on the map first. Gas is going to be done. So looking like Proxy Marauders, most likely, as we see what Bion's going to do here. Stats, stats now is going to scout down. Sees that, yes, there are barracks on the map. So technically, technically, tat, stats should hold this. Now, this is not a guarantee of any success. There is no warranty on future action or whatever the, the legalese is. Uh, <laughs> there is no warranty on anything like that. But at the very least, Stats knows what's happening. And... Actually, I'm sorry. No, no. Single gas is Proxy Reaper. What am I saying? Got myself all turned around. So yeah, Proxy Double Racks Reaper coming out from beyond here in this game. Number one is the, the SCV RNG is painfully good. That's... He gets on top of this barracks when it's like halfway done and has an opportunity to go hit exactly twice on this SCV, which just does not feel good. So anyway, Zell is going to get chronoed out. Uh, or actually not even chronoed out, but we're going to see the Adept, I assume, as a response, get chronoed out afterwards. There, yes, there is a bunker. Shield battery is going to go down. Zealot's on the low ground. And ideally, you get on top of this barracks or this bunker uh, ASAP. Now, because the Zealot's on top of this bunker and just baits out two probe kills. That's actually pretty cool uh, because, yeah, I, I don't know that Beyond ever... He would have loved to keep the bunker, absolutely, but I don't know that he was really committed to it. And by doing that, he actually just forced the probes to get pulled defensively, which meant, hey, sure, I'm going to kill two probes very easily. Now, of course, as Beyond, you want, you, want, you want more. You do want this opportunity to get a little bit more damage done. Get, a, I mean, obviously, the scouting's nice, but get a little bit more damage done. So for now, Reapers, as they dive in, there's a shield battery here. They're not really gonna accomplish all that much but i'm surprised to not see beyond trying to dive into the main base because it's stalkers with the shield battery reapers do not kill this like whatsoever they don't, they don't do anything but instead beyond's just gonna run back home develop the next round of his tech whatever that is he's got his natural on the way and yeah two probes is nice it's nifty the bait the bait was awesome it was pretty cool but uh we're not seeing nearly any follow-up out of beyond i'm not i that didn't get enough i don't think two probes even as early as it was is not enough there and now beyond he's got his barracks running back home has no opportunity to produce 
anything really and i wouldn't be surprised to see stats try to counter punch he's got a robo halfway done and you know, yeah getting a warp prism fairly quickly seems reasonable to go put some pressure on whether whether there's other options and the stalkers are in perfect position to make sure these reapers do not show up they don't get much of a scout but stats I'm gonna say you know i i don't think it's unreasonable to try to go and, and put some aggression on if your stats because hey you just took not a lot of damage you know your opponent has not been producing units for quite a while but instead third base but instead we just do more standard things As now the zealot will fall down eventually oh stays alive very nice stalkers are going to show up and I, ideally the reapers are going to see that yeah there's a third base on the way that that would be a nice scout for for beyond to figure out but yeah stalkers here nice body blocks as well the reapers have to turn around that's two dead reapers for two dead probes again you talk about how much things are worth how much value is there and the answer is well it's just not a lot so now that's he's got his third base just about done a robo bay on the way no, oh, not even a Twilight, just again. Naked Robo, Naked Robo Bay going as quickly as possible. Double Sentry this time, not the first. And he does get the scout in the main base. Of course, we saw the hallucination go over. He sees what's up. He knows roughly what's happening. Doesn't know the third base timing. And this is, again, this is a pretty quick third base for Bion. All things considered, uh, it's much faster than really, really. But most Terran players are going to go for for that six, seven minute sim timing. Uh, just really quite fast so for now we're gonna see well what are we gonna see single cyclone drop into the main base here stats is is roughly in position the stalkers are gonna have to rotate on over but you know the stalkers are like roughly in position as twilight's gonna go down forge is gonna go down a couple probes drop because hey cyclones uh for some reason kill probes really easily and despite stats being properly in position he was just slightly out of he was just slightly slow which means that well he's taking five six probes uh probe kills which is just Oh, it does not feel good here. Stats has been doing a very nice job of playing greedy, and that single cyclone was so very much. And hello, uncer uncertainty. Happy Monday morning. And holy hit, I am absolutely very offended that you were not following this channel before then. Like, what the hell, man? You're my child, apparently. You were on my team for the Warty TV uh, Caster Team League. Whatever it was, the uh, the unpicked uh, the unpicked tournament. We won together, holy hit. We won something together. Very unfortunate. But anyway, hallucination in the main base. You're gonna see. Okay, third base on the way for Beyond. Yes, there are five racks before third, so he roughly knows what's happening. First Colossus is out. Um, he's got more on the way. Hello there, Jibo Cruiser from StarCraft Two. Glad you're with us this fine morning. Now, we're not seeing double forge. I when I before I realized that this was Twilight, that makes a little bit more sense. I was like, ah, you know, stats going double forge here. That that'd be kind of cool. But no, no double forge at the moment. So we saw beyond his drop got a little bit of damage done. In fact, actually got more than a little. Got a decent amount of damage done as we see it go into the main base once again. This time though, there are stalkers there. The problem is there's no blink. There's no mobility on the map right now. Not really. Stats is charge coming up soon because he wants to make sure he has this powerful unit composition to deal with whatever aggression that Bion wants to hit with. And also, you know, counterattacks are pretty nice. But no blink that means it means that dealing with any drop here. In fact, did this I guess the drop with the cyclone did go down. I missed that, but yeah, the so the cyclone drop did go down. Um is that there again there's no mobility so it's hard for stats to really react to react to any heavy drop pressure but now charge is done so blink should get started soon second forge on the way plus two attack on the way and it, it's weird watching this game because i'm used to pvt's being pretty aggressive seeing the terran player get aggressive or see the protos player maybe go for something but this has been eight minutes where there really has not been a lot happening i mean there was a proxy i guess and there is that but now stats are going to try to hit this timing where he does have these colossus where there really is just no anti-colossus tech not really and to be frank the marauder count's not high enough we're looking at 12 marauders 23 marines three colossus on the map that's i like this pressure on four bases well yeah fourth base mining right now it is allowing him to do what he wants to do but there's no war prism just yet so he's going to get another round of stuff 
another round of zealots another round of colossus warp prism on the way warp prism speed on the way as well by the way let's see if stats can hit this timing it's a decent widow mine count there's a tank there and the sim city is actually really nice to make sure that that is gonna struggle to attack into this but he's got an archon that maybe can make something happen I can tank some shots, even if the nut really doesn't want to take the Widow Mines. But now the attack's going to go in, looking to move around. And the hold position, Micros, here is actually really nice. Knocking out the Widow Mines before the Zealots run in. Force Field is actually going to work against him here. That is not a good Force Field whatsoever. Vikings are starting to be on the field. Stalkers are well positioned for this. They don't have Blink, sure, but they are there. And this is rapidly turning into kind of a four base all in coming out of stats. Though the command centers are going to get lifted. SCVs are going to have to get pulled right now. EMPs on this army on the ghost timing, but stats is getting so much off this. The Colossus, well, they're not going to go down. Not just yet, but there's not a lot of chaff for this weed at the moment. Even still, everything is going to go down. 27 dead SCVs. The Immortals are still fighting strong. Uh, one Colossus did die, I think. Yeah, one Colossus did go down. I'm actually kind of surprised about that. I didn't really think it was going to die. But anyway, one Colossus is dead third base. Now starting to burn down 31 dead SCV stats on this 2-1 timing. He's got superior upgrades. He's got superior army supply. And this four base all in because that's what it was. There's no tech development off of this. All right? There's no blink or anything like that that allows you to really position properly. But stats plays defensively, holds on, and takes us to game number three. Game one, Bjorn goes for a three racks, three command center. Play that luck worked out really well. And I, I tend to like that build. I think it's pretty cool. You, you don't get a lot of tech. But you get a lot of economy and a lot of units and it it's pretty good it's it feels like the type of thing that you would win with quite a bit if you played it on ladder but beyond does it like one out of every 10 games or so and you look it worked uh not off the initial timing certainly not because he was scouted but off the follow-up and just having tons of marauders and and marines and, and things like that and it worked out really nicely because you on, on top of everything else that you're doing you go and you really develop your you just Get a lot of units get a lot of marauders out uh, and that really did allow beyond to do to kind of move forward and develop this army and develop this economy that he would have liked and then game two we saw beyond proxy two Rax reaper and it didn't work out really all that well he dove in he tried to get a bunker down at the natural was not able to do so got two probes for his troubles but in the grand scheme of things two probes was not really enough and then that'll enable stats to go and macro up to a third base very quickly develop his robo very quickly get into uh robo bay very quickly and win the game maybe not quite as quickly but uh go effectively go for a charge lot colossus all in off of two one and off of four bases which seems weird right like uh he had four bases clearly that's not an all-in but no uh, it was <laughs> there was no blink there was no three two on the way there was no tech development stats was just like look i'm gonna hit this timing i don't think you're gonna have anti-colossus tech out in time and first of all you're peon so yeah i know you don't like vikings anyways but second of all you yeah, committed to two racks reaper you committed to three command center off of that like your your tech is not where it needs to be i know this i'm pretty sure so I'm going to make sure that you really don't get much of anything done. I'm going to make sure that I hit this timing before you're properly ready. And it worked out for him very nicely. And now. 1-1-1 one, one, one on the way from Bian. He's got his natural on the low ground. Sure. Great. Absolutely. But uh, it's going to be Widow Mine drops on the follow-up. Now, no cloaked Widow Mines like we saw Plasma do against stats in the previous series. But, you know, just certainly just bog standard Widow Mine drops. Adept on the map here is going to get damage done to this first Widow Mine. Now, it will burrow up. Are we going to see stats try to do the tricky micro thing? Apparently not. No, he's just going to shade on through and says, oh, oh, well, I know you made Widow Mines. That's great. I got a bunch of adepts here. You only have three Marines. This is not enough right now. Now, as more Marines pop out, yes, it is. And this was looking like it might be. Is he going to get maybe one more Marine? No, oh, okay. Like it might be an Oracle follow-up because this was Stargate. And generally what we're going to see as he just shades back does not get caught by this Widow Mine. Uh, generally what we see when hero does this for example is that he goes and he goes for the he goes to this adept play right certainly and he dives on top and tries to kill marines but the reason he does this is so he can run in with oracles just afterwards and then there's just not enough anti-air and it, it can be really really nice but i like what beyond's doing here this is this was pantomimed as a widow mine drop and it is a widow mine drop technically but there are a lot of marines in this drop as well 
and that's going to be now revealed so now stats is aware of what's happening he knows this phoenix has to be careful the adept is going to shade back home as well so damage not found and stats is just playing marvelously defensively phoenix colossus once again as he moves into the mid game no you can't take your third base all that quickly again i mean i guess you can right it's only four marines but more importantly stats when you play when you play phoenix colossus like this you don't go and you don't take a four minute third base a 430 third base you should take it like 530 or so and that's fine because what you really need is gas not minerals you don't need that big mineral injection that a third base gives you so you just you don't need you don't open yourself up as much you just you play phoenix colossus you develop yourself into the mid game and there we go third base on the way right around five minutes or so beyond he's got his third base on the way as well so no crazy aggression coming out of the man just two one one type of setup third base or a third barracks on the way now and again that's developing that vision developing that setup no widow mine in the middle of the map then well actually no there is shot goes down widow mine will fall trade itself for it should go down trade itself for an adept Phoenix gonna look for the lift on the marine on the widow mine and oh heavy damage on the medevac oh he's gonna get it maybe lock on oh those are two very low phoenix and i uh, hmm. I don't know when you know that beyond's gonna go for some level of aggression i mean you scattered it out i i don't know that you want to take that much damage under phoenix that early certainly with uh, no shield battery on the third base third base isn't done so you can't overcharge it no colossus well i know he's gonna be fine actually third colossus or first colossus just about done so the colossus is out this medevac is pretty wounded but not dead just yet and beyond no third base i mean he's got his third base certainly but it's not being floated over Third orbital just about done. So now the Phoenix eh, sure sure can around a little bit more now. But really just doing this more defensively. And this has been the story of this series, right? Like pokes and prods. Sure. Beyond moves across the map, tries to get something done. Stats is ah eh, no, you don't. <laughs> you don't get to move across the map that early. And oh, it's gonna be dead right. And really we what we can expect to see here is our first round of aggression or really true interaction is going to be like eight or nine minutes. Maybe a little bit earlier. Beyond thinks about moving out, but he's going to be attacking into two Colossus. And he does not have a lot of anti-Colossus deck whatsoever. He's got two Marauders. <laughs> this is not an army that Beyond wants to fight whatsoever. Is that? There's a Liberator here in the corner. Phoenix should deal with this if they, they're aware. I, I don't know that... I don't know if the stats has scouted anything just yet, but he's good. There we go. Okay, so stats is well positioned. Colossus in the main base. Another the natural. Another or another the third base. Another one yeah, the natural soon enough. Just really making sure that he is. All of his hatches are, are buttoned down. He's buttoned up to the, the top collar. He's. In the absence of any good fashion device. He's just going to go and button up. Even without a tie, he's going to button up to that top collar to make sure that nothing pops out. And as Magnath and Chad points out, uh, Stats barely misses that air unit on the right. Well, it's only fair, uh, Magnath, because I also, for quite a while, mi barely missed the air unit on the right. We saw it eventually. But uh, that is not incredibly visible on my mini-map whatsoever. You turn up the gamma or something. But anyway, but, uh, charge lots in a warp prism on the right side. Stats now finally saying, yeah, maybe I want to get something here. Maybe I want to start to posture on the map. Now, it's only two Colossus, third one is walking on forward as well and you know this is actually a really nice position for stats generally the zelnaga tower is a wonderful thing for terran players because they just kind of hold it and they got a tank there and good luck but with the colossus with the range that they have uh, not nearly as easily so scan goes down beyond want, beyond wants to know what's on the reinforcing line he's gonna see yeah archons okay stats is all in on this or at least this is a committed timing plus one attack phoenix everything you could possibly want liberator in the main base is being annoying and stalkers are going to have to be warped in to defend and again there's no blink this is still this awkward uh, i don't even know that it's awkward necessarily but charge lot timing as now zealots in the main base but the widomai or the warp prism will fall down i was dash trying to hit the front is hill as well widomai's first one's going to get shut down a second one's going to fall down here as well as the emps are going to be pretty nice this sim city though is a problem i love what stats has done though he's got two warp prisms so at the very least he can warp in on the front lines 13 scvs fall but uh, there's no anti-air that's the problem the viking count here is really nice it's gonna have to be a recall second colossus did it die no only first colossus went down so recall is gonna go down 13 workers go down 
and stats just doesn't have anti-air i'm at, i'm very worried about stats on the rejoinder here he's down about 30 army supply he's got two colossus one very heavily wounded yeah there's a fourth base he's gonna start mining off of it but he's got nothing to deal with these vikings he's gonna have disruptors on the ground i guess and a warp prism is gonna try to distract beyond a little bit more but despite getting 13 scvs Yun's the one that's up in army supply or in, in worker count. Yun's economy is still better as we're going to see. Yeah, there we go. Scan goes down. So observer falls. And look at the Pyun is just on top of things. Warp Prism, second one goes down. And now Vikings are going to run forward. I, I mean, this is still not the easiest position for Pyun to fight into, but another Colossus falls. The lack of anti-air, especially with this is a Phoenix, being a Phoenix Colossus opening. And look, I understand. You don't get Blink all that quickly. You even if it's, if it's Phoenix opener, you get charged first instead of Blink because, hey, you know, you got your Phoenix for anti-air, but all the Phoenix are dead. Blink has not even started here. That's really needs something to deal with these Vikings or to totally back out of, of his, uh, of the Colossus idea. And he's not... I, I mean, he's still got one Colossus. He's not building anymore, certainly. But it's only two Disruptors. And his it's not like his upgrades are good enough to really justify what's happening here. So, okay, Widow Mine will fall. Second one dies as well. But now all the Disruptor shots are out. And this is not this is only, only single Robo. All the Splash is going to go down. Beyond, he senses opportunity right now. I mean, this is a ton of Zealots. But equal army supply, ton of Zealots. Not really a good bit of math right there. As well, Widow Mine will fall. That is nice. Zealots are going to try to get a run by going as well. But Bion continues to cut away. I just look at this. This is never going to be cost effective now. Well, <laughs> all the zealots are dead. Disruptor's going to fall. Miss Micro here moving forward. And by the way, the widow or the, the last Colossus died as well with the Vikings. So they're just totally happy. They're very content to land. Now, zealots are dealing with the reinforcing line, and that is pretty nice. And well, stats continues to run. Wait, no, nah, no way, stat. No, no stats. This is not a thing. Is Stats going to just rally this on board and win the game? Now, unfortunately, we disrupt your falls to a Widow Mine. But Stats is just rallying Zealots across down upgrades. And is kind of winning the game. This is not a, this is not legal. This is not what's happening in this game. No way. <laughs> 22 dead SCVs, 26 dead SCVs. Archon's on the front line getting even more done. Stats maintains the... Well, he's just got a ton of Zealots. He's got his Archon that is slowly dying dying actually very really quickly but the zealots are just winning this is not oh no no stats this flies in the favor the face of everything we know about starcraft 2 this is not legal here and the supplies are beyond is starting to get a little bit better supplies certainly but this economic damage that's finally blink is just about done as well widow mines on the high ground okay it's gonna get the warp prism sure but the well actually it's gonna get the warp prism the, the stalkers died as well this is flying in the face of everything we know about StarCraft 2. It's 54 dead workers. And yes, Stats' army supply is not incredible at the moment, but he's going to kill more ghosts. Not this one. Uh, ghosts actually kill <laughs> Zealots very quickly. As finally, this ghost will go down. And yeah, it's a 30 army supply deficit. But three twos on the way. Two ones on the two uh, Two twos done. Three threes on the way. Uh, we're adding in the Warp Prism. We're adding more High Templar. And Stats is... 67 workers to 38. He's killed 66 workers this game. Thinking about getting that fifth base, but not not just yet. And if he can survive like the next minute or so, he's actually in a really good spot. Adding in Colossus as well, because I think that actually makes a ton of sense. Add in the Colossus. It's great. You know that all the Vikings are dead. You know that Beyond is building things that are not Vikings, because why the hell would you build Vikings right now? This has been a charge lot Archon composition. As now, oh, oh, he's gonna get the drop too. Yes, a pro, a single probe died. Who cares? Who the hell cares? Now this Colossus has to get coroned out, and it is. It is getting coroned out. Beyond, he's on four bases technically. He's got his fifth, but why? He's on four bases. Certainly, he's 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 built his worker count up pretty quickly back up once again. So fifty-six to sixty-six. Stats his worker count again. He hasn't been mining a lot of gas. It's just minerals on the third base. On the, I guess he's mining gas on the fourth base now, but just minerals for the most part. It's 3-2 versus 3-2. Three, uh, yeah, 3-2 three, versus 3-2. Three, plus three armor on the way. Stats is now going to try to take this fight. Colossus not here just yet. Widow Mine's really nice. 
Now the EMP is going to go down as well, but again, it's up. Stats is up a base. As we look at this 12 gate timing coming out of stats, he's got his, he, he's got shields on the way and yeah, shields against ghosts are not incredible, but the ghost counts, not the best thing ever either. If we look at our ghost count, I actually no, no, it, it, never mind. It is seven ghosts. They can't really be too upset. And now I think the one thing I would love to see stats do is first of all, up that probe count a little bit. You know, it's only, only 66 or so, but up the probe count. So you mine a little bit more gas and then go double robo go triple robo really start to lean into this tech because well Bion just can't really match it and mass charge lot is not the best composition right now it's not incredible archons they they time out as well so can stats make this happen though but a mine on the high ground is gonna get a juicy shot here emp is on this army as well and i that doesn't feel good so stats he wants to move up to the high ground he's got shields done in just about five seconds warping in more and more zealots as he tries to make the second hit happen He's not, uh, yeah, he is going to supply block Beyond actually. So the Colossus here, the charge lots moving on top of things. Now remember, Beyond's down a base, but his economy's doing pretty well. More Vikings are on the way. This time there are stalkers to deal with this. The, the, te the tech of this Protoss army is a little bit better. STVs are going to have to get pulled into this fight. And this is an awkward concave really from both sides. Stats wants to move forward. EMP's on this army once again. And now the Zealots are going to have to try, try to run forward, but they're caught behind the Archons a little bit. Stalkers are just mostly dead, but well, the Vikings are dead too. So stats, he's got himself 17 more dead SCVs. That's like 100 dead SCVs in this game. Third base wants to go land. That doesn't seem like a good idea. Uh, the army is still here. Vikings and, or Stalkers and Archons are going to do what they can. The Colossus have to run back just a little bit. Now, well, now here comes the fight. Once again, EMPs on this army. More and more Zealous going to run forward, but it is looking more and more likely in this game that Bion is going to fall down in the round of 16 here in EPT Korea to a resurgent stats. It's not, it's not done totally yet. And yes, there are Vikings moving forward. Stalkers are going to blink on top of them. The Warp Prism will fall down. The Colossus are going to get shut down here eventually. But even if this falls, Bion has no economy anymore. His army is not incredible. Stats is on five bases. Bion's on three. And this is a planetary. This is not some crazy Bion setup where he's on four orbitals and has the ability to, to find money back. No, Bion's lost 102 SCVs. And he asked, yeah, he's tapped out in this game. Stats, 2-1 Bion. He moves into the round of eight. I didn't have that one. I certainly didn't have that one.